Tesla just revealed their new battery technology, their lofty future production goals, and also the Plaid Model S at Battery Day. However, this event has left many people feeling disappointed. Let's talk about why Battery Day was not disappointing, neither was it a letdown. I'm Jonathan Stewart, and welcome to Cleaner Watt. Today the news was filled with articles like this one from CNBC talking about how Wall Street was disappointed about Battery Day. This article talked about how Tesla's Battery Day fell short of hopes and expectations. And to be fair, this event was hyped up a lot by media and also Elon Musk himself. On September 17th, Elon Musk responded to a Tesla Roddy article about the Roadrunner cell production line that would be talked about at Battery Day, and he said it will be very insane. Also, two days before Battery Day, Jason on Twitter asked for any hints on Battery Day, and Elon Musk said it's big. However, even though every expectation that I had, of course, was not met, Battery Day was much of what I expected it to be. The only thing about Battery Day that was slightly disappointing was the fact that Tesla did not have the Plaid Model S present at the event, and some of the time estimates for hitting these production goals were a little further out than I had hoped. However, Battery Day was a game changer, and let's talk about all the technology and everything that was mentioned by Tesla at Battery Day. At Battery Day, Tesla revealed six big key revelations that I believe are very important and game changing. Let's talk about those six key revelations. The first revelation that Tesla spent a lot of time laying this out was the fact that they plan and they laid out this plan to reduce the cost of batteries by 56% at the dollar per kilowatt hour level. They discussed their five tier approach to reducing these battery costs by 56% and it included the following. They talked about the cell design improvements with their larger battery that is also tabless, which makes it easier to manufacture and also has a lot of cost advantages. They also talked about how they're going to improve the factories that make the cells with their new dry battery electrode processes, which greatly reduces the amount of floor space needed in a battery factory and also increases the amount of cells that can be produced in a gigafactory. Tesla claimed that at their new Terra factories or gigafactories that each individual battery line would be capable of producing around 20 gigawatt hours per year. They also discussed their more cost effective anode materials, specifically talking about bringing silicon to the anode. And then they also spent quite a bit of time talking about diversifying the cathode material. They're going to be using iron-based cells, lithium iron phosphate cells, where lower energy density is needed, but they still need high cycle life. They plan to use a nickel and manganese battery chemistry for their medium energy density needs, and they plan to use their most energy-dense batteries, the nickel-rich batteries, in the semi and also the Cybertruck, where the watt-hours per kilogram energy density is really important. The final bit of this 56% cost reduction was found in the way they actually manufacture the battery pack itself and implement that into the car. They talked about how they're going to be using a structural battery pack to improve the mass efficiency and the range by lowering the weight. I definitely expect that we'll first see these structural battery packs in the Gigafactory in Berlin in the Model Y. A second ago, we briefly talked about Tesla's larger cell. I'd like to dive into that just a little deeper. The second revelation that we learned about at Tesla's Battery Day was that they're going to be producing a larger format cell, what they call their 4680, meaning it has a diameter of 46 millimeters and it has a height of 80 millimeters. When you compare this to the 2170 cell found in the Model 3 and the Model Y, it has five times the energy, it has six times the power, and it allows for a 16% range increase. Also, Tesla's new tablet's design eliminates the thermal problems normally associated with cooling a very large cell. The third big key revelation that we learned about was the progress of Tesla's dry battery electrode technology. They spent quite a bit of time talking about the difference between the wet coat and dry electrode coating process in a factory. And by doing the dry electrode coating process, they eliminate a lot of machinery and they're able to reduce the factory footprint of a battery factory by 10 times and have a 10x reduction in the energy needed for battery production. 
They talked about the Maxwell Technologies acquisition and the technology they got from them and how they're on revision four of that technology of the machine that makes this dry battery electrode process possible. And Elon Musk talked about how the current process works, but they don't yet have a high yield. They are still ironing out the kinks, but they still have made tens of thousands of battery cells with this process. Elon Musk said that they'll probably have to reach around revision six in this machine and in this process before they can reach volume production. Another really big key revelation that we learned about at Battery Day was the fact that Tesla laid out the plan to have a Terra factory instead of a Giga factory. They talked about how they're going to have battery factories that are going to be smaller than the existing Giga factories, but yet they're going to be able to produce around one terawatt hour of battery capacity per year. Tesla's current Gigafactory in Nevada has a theoretical capacity with its size of around 150 gigawatt hours per year. Even with that theoretical capacity, they are nowhere near that max right now. However, with Tesla able to produce 20 gigawatt hours of battery capacity per year with one single line in this new Terra factory, it really becomes clear that this is actually something that Tesla should be able to do in the very near future. I expect that we'll see these new battery lines find their way in Gigafactory Berlin and also Gigafactory Texas and also Gigafactory Shanghai. Another huge announcement was Tesla revealed that they plan to bring out a $25,000 electric vehicle that will have autonomous capability for around $25,000. They talked about how they should be able to bring out this vehicle in around three years. And then of course, as I talked about in a previous video, they also revealed the Plaid Model S and you can now go online to Tesla's website and order one. The Plaid Model S has a range of over 520 miles. It will be able to reach a top speed of 200 miles per hour and also be able to go zero to 60 in two seconds. On top of that, it should have a quarter mile time that is less than nine seconds. You can order a Plaid Model S right now for just under $140,000, which is actually quite a good deal when you compare this price point to some of the other competitors. The final big key revelation that Tesla revealed at their battery day was the fact that by 2030, they plan to be producing around three terawatt hours of batteries per year. Elon Musk also revealed their internal goal of selling around 20 million vehicles per year sometime in the future. I mean, long term, we, you know, we want to try to uh, replace about, you know, uh, at least 1% of the total vehicle fleet on Earth, which is about 2 billion vehicles. So long term, we want to try to make about 20 million vehicles a year. So all in all, I was not disappointed with Tesla's battery day. We did learn a lot of things and Tesla laid out a clear roadmap to success in the future. In all reality, Tesla is only a couple years away from extreme mass production when they have all their Gigafactories that are currently being built finished, Gigafactory in Texas and Gigafactory in Berlin, Germany, and also when Shanghai ramps up completely. Tesla revealed enough at Battery Day to make me excited and to give me a glimpse of the future. Thank you so much for watching. If you're not yet subscribed to this channel, and I have quite a few people that watch my channel regularly that are not subscribed, but if you're one of those people that are not subscribed to this channel, please consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, if you click the little bell icon, YouTube will notify you when I publish new videos. Also, if you did like the video, please consider clicking the little like button because that helps people find the video as well. Also, I want to take a moment to thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community that I've set up, I'll put a link in the description below. Thank you so much.